surviving infidelity. Getting cheated on was terrible but it turned out to be the best thing ever for me. I am happily married now, I've been together with my wife for 8 years, married for 6. I've always been honest with her. When we got together, I let her know that I had been engaged before. She obviously had questions, this is going to be fun I said. My first portion of advice is never date a stripper. You think you can change them, but you cannot. It is not as glamorous or exciting as it seems. I met the ex in a strip club obviously, she called me back and we hung out. She was beautiful and blonde, as well as athletic. At that time, I was young and dumb, full of hormones and testosterone. What proceeded was the worst six months of my life. I was paying for everything. For a stripper, she sure as hell didn't make good money. I soon found out, she was addicted to buying clothes among other things. We rented a house together, then moved into a bigger one. Where it started to get shady for me, is when I found out about a friend of hers, he was an older man who owned a car dealership. He was just a friend. Occasionally she would spend time with him because he was lonely and I would pick her up. I know how it sounds, I was a freaking idiot. She also had a kid, and he was a great one at that. They obviously had some issues, and I tried to make things better. Coming from a pretty messed up household that involved a lot of drugs and arguments, I had sympathy for them. My brother and his wife were initially supportive, but warned me. Things went to hell when she started sleeping in all day, spending more money, and more time with her friend. I would work 12 to 14 hour shifts, then have to go pick her son up from practice because she forgot or slept in. We started to get behind on bills, and were using credit cards way too much. I started to realize that this is not good, apparently because some of my co-workers knew who she was. Also, people in the hospital knew who she was. This was not great for my career. There were a few things that helped me make my decision to ghost her. She absolutely refused to get help, when I found out about her narcotic habit, when I found 6 empty oxycodone bottles in her drawer. Another great thing is when she stole half my prescription of Adderall for my ADHD. I was not sleeping, or eating well. I was super stressed. And then of course she spent the night with the guy I found out. The last straw for me, was when we were so broke, I had to sell my dead friend's rifle that he had given to me to pay bills. The guy was a single dad and deserved it. I'm glad I sold it to him. But as he left and I was sitting in the parking lot with $400 in my hand, I quickly realized that this was blood money, addiction money for her habit. I cried a little, I'm not embarrassed to say that. I called my twin brother, may he rest in peace. I told him what was going on, and everything that happened. He and his wife had me come over to their house. The stripper tried to get me back and harassed me and them, and told me that I needed to come home and take care of my family. They did not let me leave. When she was gone one day, my brother and his friends helped me move out and grabbed everything that was mine. That was the best thing they could have done for me. My brother truly showed what a real brother was. I moved back in with my mom, I completely ghosted her and left her with the rent. I felt bad for her kid, but nobody cheats on me and gets away with it. She tried to have me come over and grab my mail and I did, came out dressed sexy and everything. I was not having it. I said take care of yourself. As I was leaving, I heard her scream as I got into my car and start breaking things in the house. That was the last time I would talk to her, or so I thought. I was Christmas shopping at her local mall with my best friend, I go onto the two aisle and look who's there. It's my ex. I was shocked. She worked there for the season. She walked up and talked to me and said it's nice to see you and hugged me, my arms were at my side. She whispered in my ear you look great I'd like to jump your bones. I said yeah, good to see you. My friends said let's get the hell out of here. We pretty much ran out of there. I was nauseated seeing her again. But that was truly the last time. Everybody at work and in my family was very supportive, and because of this, I was able to get back to normal and save my career. To all the guys and girls out there, have some respect for yourself. Establish standards, if you have a suspicion follow up on it. Do not back down and be a doormat like I was. Six months after we broke up, I meet the love of my life. We are happily married, and I've never trusted another woman more. Thank you to whoever read this. And for me, I can never forgive a cheater and a liar. And as the saying goes, once a cheater always a cheater. I am trying not to judge other people who have cheated and repaired their marriage, but they knew the risk and what they were doing was wrong. Some can fix their relationships, I could not, and would not. I am a good husband to my wife and will never betray her. Now for the top comments. Thanks for this. This sub needs some sunshine every now and then. Wishes had brother like yours and I'd have not been such a dupe when I was younger. 
there are people who have made it out of infidelity whether they divorced or reconciled, I hope more here do. You're certainly welcome dude. I'm glad that I could shine some light on your life. There is life after infidelity, and you can make it. I'm glad that you're doing well, I'm sorry that stuff happened to you. Better that you were young though, because you grew wiser and will not make that same mistake. I used to have a friend who was dating a stripper. He was able to get her clean of meth, but got pulled into a codependent relationship because he was afraid that she would end herself if he left. He hated that she did private dances, where other men not only looked at his girlfriend but potted her too. All of our mutual friends were talking about how brave she was and all that. I could see the look in his eyes though. It was as if he was trapped in a nightmare that he couldn't get out of. She finally blew up at me about something totally unrelated, and I just cut off that pod friends as being too toxic to be around. Stay strong, brother. You made the right choice. Thank you very much, it sure was. I'm not afraid to tell people that I was weak, but luckily, I had people to support me. That's not always the case for people. At least in here, I can give people hope and advice. This can be inspirational for someone that's caught in love and stuck in the manipulation loop. You walked up to the gates of hell, glad you opened your eyes and walked away. Some people are not that lucky my friend. Some dudes are just sure that, this time, they will change and they love the cheater so much. Unfortunately they walk through those gates willingly. Very true, and thank you for your wonderful compliment. I'm glad I survived. Now for the next story. D-Day was about 5 hours ago. Me, 32 male, wife, 32 female. Not sure where to start. I know I just found out, but writing is very therapeutic for me, and I surprisingly have a clear head. Anytime I vocalize it I start crying, so writing is my method of release. About a month ago, my wife found out her best friend was cheating on her husband. With COVID, I was feeling lonely so I suggested inviting them to dinner, which is when she told me that was a bad idea and why. I immediately told her we can't see her friend anymore because she is untrustworthy and that she is no longer allowed near our two-year-old son. We stopped talking to her and I reached out to her husband to offer my support. I had only started looking at Reddit for a few months prior, and found this sub around the time I found about the other couple's affair. When I read the stories on here, I always got emotional just thinking what I would do in any of your situations. Most of the stories involve catching a spouse by looking at their phones. I have never looked through my wife's phone before, but last night I couldn't sleep. I woke up to buy a Nintendo Switch deal for Christmas that went on sale at 1am ET today. Couldn't get back to sleep afterwards. I played video games all night, and around 8am, I see my wife's phone charging on the table next to me and decided to take a look. I snooped more just to relieve my conscience, and even though her phone was locked, I had seen her unlock it enough to know the combination. I checked texts, email, and Facebook Messenger, and there was nothing. I put her phone down and started playing video games again but I didn't feel relieved. I went back and started to see if she had Snapchat. She had it hidden in a folder. Now I don't use Snapchat, it looks like you sent video messages, but there was an unread message that said, Good night. Love you. With hearts. There was no name next to the cartoon icon, just a four digit number. I scrolled up and read some of their conversation with my heart racing a mile a minute. I can tell it was a co-worker. They had gotten physical. They told each other I love you. I took pictures on my phone of their conversation. It wasn't very long, but spanned over a year, I am guessing a lot was deleted or they video chatted. I woke her up. Showed her that I knew and started to confront her. She just sat there in stunned silence. No tears. No words. After a few minutes of silence, I told her to get dressed and go to her parents. I called her dad and let her know she was coming and why. I still haven't heard anything from her. I asked a friend to come over and he is helping me keep an eye on my son while I struggle with this. If I hadn't been reading stories on this site prior, I would probably made a mess of how I handled it. What I am not sure of is what to do next. I know you will all say to divorce her. I have said the same thing to people in my situation. I am not sure if we have enough money to divorce each other, or a custody battle. We both work, and most of our savings just went into the house we just bought less than a year ago. I am mostly heartbroken for my son. Before I kicked her out, she tried to hug our son goodbye, and I pulled him away from her and told her that she didn't just cheat on me, but also on him. I am not even sure what my life would look like being single. We both come from Christian families, met in early 20s, and she was my first everything. I gave her my first time on our wedding night. I spoke to my family which was really hard. 
They live across the country, we moved near where her family lives about 5 years ago. We don't have childcare because I worked during the day 9 to 5 and she worked the late shift at a retail store. We just took turns watching him. What seems like a slap face to add with all the other slap in the faces, is the way she acted and what she said about her best friend's affair. The hypocrisy is maddening. I'm just at a loss. I will try to post an update once more info comes out. Sorry for any spelling errors. Now for the top advice before we read the little update. Contact an attorney tomorrow. Don't worry about the cost issue. This is your life right now. Get tested for STDs right away. Find out if her affair partner has a spouse and let them know now. You will have to figure something out about child visitation prior to the divorce if you decide to finalize it. She does have a right to see your son. Experience tells me reconciliation is a lost cause in this situation. I've been there. Good luck, mate. Just saw your update. You need to get a DNA test for your son. You say he's two years old and she has been cheating for at least three years. Do the math. I'm really sorry, mate. I hope he's yours. Up, I'm really sorry. I'm in a similar story, age, and background as you. I would recommend the Affair Recovery website. They have many videos that helped me understand why my mind was doing things and my behavior was controlled by this traumatic experience. It helped me. They have a great course, guiding you through recovery, they have courses for the wayward spouse as well. I would really recommend not making rash decisions. I gave myself a long time to think through what I really wanted to do, while also watching my spouse's behavior. My story ended up being him, not knowing what he wants to do with a marriage, though a Christian, so we separated. In the first couple of days slash weeks, please be kind to yourself, eat regularly, though your body may not want that, and try to sleep, though your thoughts may prevent that, and don't neglect your time with God, even if you feel angry with him for allowing this. Above all, no matter what your wife says, it's not your fault. Hang in there. Divorce is expensive because it is worth it. Truer words have never been spoken. Small update. I went back and looked at the messages that I took pictures of. The furthest back I was able to find was over three years ago. It was some lovey-dovey meme. I have a good relationship with her parents and told them how long ago the affair started. They said they were coming to pick my son up so I could talk to my wife, they live one hour 30 minutes away. I told them to turn around. That I love them, and that I was sorry that their daughter did this to them, but if they showed up, with or without my wife, I was calling the police. I called my wife and could hear that they were still driving. After yelling at her as she kept saying we could work this out, I told her if they show up, I would post and send her messages to all her family. Also, my sister is flying taking a flight to see me and spend the week with me. After we spoke, she said she loved me and I just really broke down for the first time. Knowing that that love was at least unconditional. I haven't cried like that since my mom passed away. Now for the last story. My, 28 female, best friend, 28 female, kissed my husband, 28 male, and they've both been hiding it from me for months. I feel stuck. My best friend lost her job slash apartment in February. She asked me to let her move in with us temporarily which I did. In June, my husband was very insistent that she leaves ASAP, but wouldn't tell me why. She ended up moving out in July to stay with another one of our friends. This other friend is the one who told me. My so-called best friend has been bragging about kissing my husband and claims they did other stuff. My husband denied it but eventually admitted she kissed him. He claims he didn't want to tell me because I was going through a high-risk pregnancy at the time, and is adamant nothing else happened between them. I've known for two weeks and I just can't seem to get over it. I also feel stuck because I'm entirely financially reliant on my husband. I've spent the past few years sacrificing my career for him. We also have a newborn who I have to consider, and my mom as my husband is paying for her to get private medical treatment that she desperately needs. It feels like nuking my family's lives over one kiss just isn't worth it, but I really can't get over it. I've also seen how nasty his family are with divorce. His dad personally helped his cousin get full custody of his kids and completely destroyed his ex-wife in the divorce even though he was the cause of their marriage failing. I'm terrified they'll do the same to me and I can't afford a lengthy court battle whilst he definitely can. I guess I'm hoping someone who has been in the same position with me can offer some advice on what I should do next. Now for the top advice. If he wanted to kick her out so badly, maybe she kissed him against his will? He 100% should have told you, absolutely. I think you both should go to counseling for this, 
separate and or together. It really does help. As for the financial stuff, I get that. I was in the same position, and because of it, I decided to stay, but there had to be a very long serious talk about boundaries and what is and is not okay. Things are going better now for us and I hope it gets better for you too, but in order to give the best advice we need a tiny bit more info, because right now, it sounds like he was completely unwilling which does make a difference in moving forward. I thought of it more as he didn't want OP to find out. The cover up is worse than the actual cheating. If it were against his will, he would have told OP. I'm guessing you are stuck on two things. 1. That he didn't tell you about the kiss and maybe never planned to tell you. This sucks because there was a part of his life that he kept secret from you and it involved another woman. Worse, this woman was privy to information that you weren't. It makes you feel like you are in second place. 2. Bragging about kissing my husband and claims they did other stuff. Ouch. That leaves you wondering who to believe. The other woman, or your hubby. The other woman is obviously unstable, so she could be lying about other stuff, but she was telling the truth about the kiss and your husband initially withheld the information, and then denied it, before admitting it. The fact that he lied slash admitted, makes you feel unsafe and it can cause anxiety. Unfortunately, there is no good answer here. You can try and trust him, but the worry that he is still lying will never completely go away. You can try getting more info. 1. Either there is no more info and you will be exactly where you are now. 2. The info will confirm your husband's story and will make you feel safer because you were able to verify it. He lied once, so this is fair and necessary to your state of mind. 3. The info will confirm the other woman's story and you will have a cheating spouse on your hands. Can you reach out to the mutual friend and ask if there is any proof via text messages, emails, pictures, etc? Let's see. She kissed him. Did he kiss her back? Based on that event, he made her move out while trying to reduce the stress on your pregnancy. If he wanted to have an affair with her, he could have but he didn't. He threw her out. Other than not telling you once you gave birth, it seems like he made the best choices in a bad situation. She claims he initiated it. He claims he pushed her away. Also, the kiss happened in May according to her so he didn't immediately kick her out. She says he only told her to leave, when she told him she was going to tell me if he didn't. I don't really know what's true and what's not though. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.